भगवान श्री योगी राम सुरत कुमार की सर्वों योगी राम सुरत कुमार नाउ टुडे वंस अगेन वी शुड गो थ्रू ए पर्टिकुलर इंसिडेंट विच इलेट्स द ग्लोरी ऑफ भगवान बाउंडलेस कंपैशन एंड ग्रेस In 2016, one Sri Chenni Ryan had come to the ashram. He'd been coming off and on, but uh, at that time he told us his story, <coughs> his story of Bhagwan's glory. We were really moved. Even as he was saying it, his eyes were filled with tears, and as he narrated it. we found our eyes also filling he said several years back he brought his four year old son to the ashram because his son would not take any food for weeks he would not take any food he would not hear of it they had gone to many many doctors reputed renowned doctors and they could do nothing about it all they said was his liver is totally non functional a very very difficult to make it work again we have tried our best this child may be counting his days you better try and give some fluids to the child periodically this is all they could say very much agitated agonized he brought the child to yogi ram sarath kumar ashram on that day it was pretty crowded more than 300 people were seated in that small dining hall there was hardly any space and when he wanted to see bhagwan and explain the organizers found it very difficult to send him near so they said it's okay you sit here somewhere and pray it's not possible to go near him so he could do nothing about it. he begged he tried but all in vain so he sat there with the crowd and he was praying and praying and praying while crying so much inside his 4 year old son was seated in his lap swami for a long time was sitting and smoking and smoking it was not just smoking it was smoking away the karmas of people so bhagwan was very busy with that with so many people around after some time he got up and came storming in he went round and round and round began to bless people and then he also came and stood for a few minutes near chenni ryan with the child looked at the child and then he went back to his seat again he sat there for some time in the meantime chenni ryan told his son look next time swami comes you have to lift your head and look up at him so just when he said that swami got up again again he stormed in and out of all those rows of people and again he came and stood near this child and this child now looked up at him had his eyes filled of the divine form of bhagwan and bhagwan smiling he started to fan the child twice or thrice after that he went back to his seat 
That's all that happened, but it was tremendous. Bhagwan knew everybody's mind, and knowing it, he came deliberately near this boy and fanned him from his divine panka, the hand fan. After that, after Bhagwan left for Sudama, the devotees were all invited to have their lunch. So when these people were seated in rows, and when the food was being served, this little boy suddenly said, Father, I feel so hungry, please give me something to eat. Then he said, Oh, you are feeling hungry, he was, he was so happy. Immediately he fed this child with a, two or a few morsels of food. He just could not believe what was happening. The child, which would not even see food for quite a few weeks now, could not take anything at all, is now asking for solid food. And right in the ashram, soon after Swami left for Sudama, then he knew that Bhagwan had set it right for him. And what was more, when they went back home, once again the child spoke. The child said, Appa, Father, I am hungry again, please give me something to eat. Now this was to repeat itself several times in the following days. The child began to eat well, and then after that they took the child to the hospital, where the doctors declared that the child was moving towards a certain death. And all they could do, they had done. So the doctors this time, after testing the child, exclaimed excitedly, Oh, your child's liver has started to work. What happened? How did this miracle happen? Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar happened to the child. That is all that happened. Bhagwan, of course, at the time, physically available to everyone, and he could physically lift his hand fan and pour his grace out of that. I had seen Bhagwan blessing people with anything that was available nearest. Once, when he was walking through the street, somebody was there ready with a carrier and a plantain leaf. He just pulled the plantain leaf out of that, started to walk, and then with the leaf, the huge plantain leaf, holding it in hand, he was blessing people around for some time. There is even a photograph of Bhagwan seated outside one of the vessel shops with a huge plantain leaf. Now, Bhagwan, physical body is no more available to people except for a few who could see him at a subtle level. But Bhagwan had left his name behind. Once a lady devotee asked him, after getting blessings for her sister, she said, Bhagwan, should my sister go through the operation now? Then Bhagwan thundered. Many patients come here to this beggar, but there is no hospital here. There is no chloroform, there is no operation. There are no electrical gadgets and there is no medicine. My father has given a new medicine to the world, the name Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar. This is the best medicine for all ills of body and mind. And then he added one more sentence, he said, it is the best medicine for all ills of life and death. What did he mean? Of course, ills of life are our problems, the sufferings of different kinds, not only physical illness. 
But what about death? It means transcending the death, going into the realm of deathlessness by holding on to Bhagwan's Nama, we would be free from all ills of life and also from death and go beyond it into eternal living. So with this in mind, we shall offer, we have been singing for one hour, such a great Nama, Nama which he called the medicine for all ills of life. Bhagwan. Today, we shall share a particular incident that would once again illustrate the glory of Bhagwan's Nama. A devotee by name Ramaswami, a worshipper of Mahavishnu, who would chant at times Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and at times Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar, but Many, many times, when in difficulty, it is only Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar that would come to him. So much so that it became constantly <coughs> dancing on his tongue. It began to dance on his tongue. And uh, he lives in utter poverty. A painter by profession, unless called for work, he would not be able to earn anything. But somehow he managed, and with all that, he would also sometimes visit some <coughs> holy places. Once he decided to visit Pandaripur with two other friends, he borrowed some money and took one magazine of Sharanagatam with a huge picture of Bhagwan on that, and left. And there, after the darshan, he also took some, collected some water in a can in order to bring it to the ashram here for Abhishekam, <coughs> to Bhagwan Yogi Ram Sarathma's Murti. So they arrived at Cholapu Junction, they kept the water on their backs. He also bought ten Jaldras. They, he put them together and then they put all their bags. You know, the bag had black color, so black colored bags were there and then they went to sleep. And suddenly he woke up with some noise, he heard somehow. He woke up to find that all these black bags of all the three of them were stolen by a thief and the thief was running away. He was shocked, shouted Yogi Ram Sarathma and began to run also. But he lost him. The thief was out of sight and it was dark everywhere. There was a train also standing on the other side. He did not know where to find him, he just kept on running, shouting Yogi Ram Sarathma, Yogi Ram Sarathma, Yogi Ram Sarathma. He came almost to the edge of the platform and there was an old man there. <coughs> he said, what happened? You have lost your black bag? It was very specific. He, he said, yes, yes, we had just kept it there, went to sleep and this man had stolen that and we don't know where he is. And that old man smiled and said, your black bag is coming there. He pointed to a place and then he saw the thief coming running with all those backs there and the minute he shouted Yogi Ram Sarathmar, our Ramaswami shouted Yogi Ram Sarathmar with such excitement that thief fell down and all those backs were scattered around. And Ramaswami was bent upon finding his own black bag because it contained Bhagawan's magazine, Sharanagatam, with Bhagawan's picture and also the Jaldras. Anyway, the Jaldras were making noise while it fell down, so he could easily spot it and he took it and then he took out this magazine also, Sharanagatam, 
and immediately 10, uh, 10, 15 people had gathered there and uh, the policemen also came and they caught the thief. So the thief was caught and what was more, people began to see what this man was looking at excitedly and then they said, they recognized, oh, Babaji, Babaji, Babaji. And Sri Ramaswamy assured, even today, that picture of Bhagwan is hung there in the railway station. And so he returned with his bag and others also took their bags. And then two days after the Jayanti of Bhagwan, the function was taking place in the ashram, he wanted to come and bring, you know, he wanted to bring the Chandrabhaga water for Abhishekam. So early morning he woke up, had a bath, and then decorated the feet of Bhagwan in his house and started. He <coughs> persuaded his son to take him by cycle and fast because the bus was at 3.50, early morning. The boy was trying to drive the cycle as fast as he could, but still when they reached it was past four o'clock and our Ramaswami thought the bus would have gone and he felt very bad and just at the time the, bi the bus entered the bus stand and that is when he learned there was some repair, some breakdown of the bus, so they had to repair it and then bring it, so it was late and it came only at 4.15, so immediately he was so happy again because he was chanting Bhagavan's Namo all the way in order to catch the bus. So Bhagavan delayed the bus so that he could board the bus comfortably and when he came to the ashram, when there was this program of sharing of experiences with Bhagavan by the devotees, he narrated this incident. It was very touching because he said he had borrowed again another hundred rupees to come to Thiruvannamalai, that he did not have money at all. Every time Swami gives some money to somebody to come here and that because of his Nama he survived his whole family, surviving and he said, Bhagavan never let him down. So with this in mind, we shall appeal to the generosity, compassion of Bhagwan. He would not let us down also. Definitely all these namas that we have been chanting, all the prayers that we have been making, must be working already at different level. And because the problem is huge, it's an unprecedented crisis. The whole world is shaken been brought to a standstill, all because of a, a small virus which could not even be seen by people. We pray, Bhagwan, before we offer our usual prayer at the feet of Bhagwan. The prayer has become usual because it's been repeating itself because the situation seems to continue on and on. We do not know what the Divine has in store for us. But our job is to appeal to this boundless grace. Though we do not really understand what grace is, there is a little incident which will give us a glimpse of what grace is, the glory of grace. God blesses people in three ways. When we pray for something, when we ask for something earnestly, sincerely, soulfully, He would say yes and give us immediately what we want. And sometimes He would say no, but then He would give us something better than what we ask for. And sometimes He would neither say yes nor no, but will keep us waiting. And sometimes it would turn out to be a long wait also. But 
at the end of which we would get the best grace that could ever happen. There is a small incident that illustrates how the weight can prove to be more beneficial than anything else. There is uh, Sri Sundar Raman, Prabha, they are known to people. Their son's marriage took place. When Swami had come to Sudama, Srimati Prabha was helping in the household of Sudama. Their son got married. And after that, they had a certain prayer which they had to fulfill. They had taken a vow, the family, it is in the tradition of the family, to take a vow and then fulfill it. So after the marriage, they, they had to go to Swami Malay. And so they invited Bhagwan also to come and grace the occasion, and Bhagwan agreed. So on the auspicious day, we all went to Swami Malay, and their relatives also joined. Mrs. Prabha's brother, G. Venkatraman, the president of Chennai Satsang Samiti, and his wife. They also came, and after the function went off very well, we packed up and pushed off. By some mistake, I had left the, the turban cloth of Bhagwan, the green turban cloth of Bhagwan, which Bhagwan was using, and uh, somehow we started without that. But after us, after we went away, Mr. Venkatraman and his wife, they had come to the place and they found us lying there and they knew that we had left it behind. So they picked up very happily because it's a great fortune. And so they just took it and went home to Chennai and put it in the puja room. One day his wife suggested we should not keep it without his permission. Though we found it, we have to give it back to him and we can take it back if he permits. So we have to go to Tiruvannamalai to offer it back to him. So the couple came to Sudama, at the time Bhagwan was there in Sudama. So they came there for Darshan, and then they offered this green turban cloth, saying that they found it there. And, uh, you know, there was such expression on their face. I don't remember whether they voiced it out or not, but they so much wanted to possess it. Looking at their expression and their desire, which is justified, I asked Bhagwan. Bhagwan, can they have it? Will you not please give them that? Unexpectedly, to my shock, great shock, and to their shock also, he said, No, Devaki, you take it from them. And then he added, We shall give them something better. And then, of course, with this assurance, they became all right again because Bhagwan was saying something. So he was going to give something better than this. So they had no reason to complain anymore. And uh, they went away, and after some time, uh, I think uh, Mr. Venkatraman left for the Gulf country where he was working as an engineer. One day, the old machine that they used at the site got damaged, it wasn't working, so they were going to use a new machine. And that day, Sri Venkatramanji came out of his room, came to the site and was about to operate it. Just at the time, somebody came running, saying that 
There's a phone call for you in your room from Tiruvannamalai. At the mention of Tiruvannamalai, he ran, he ran away from the place. He might not have run otherwise, but the word Tiruvannamalai was magic. A call from Tiruvannamalai. And then he ran all the way immediately and uh, he took the phone and then he found it was dead the other side, there was nobody. He again and again tried, but there was no response at all. He was thinking, he was wondering, why? Who could have called me from Thiruvannamalai? And why isn't working now? Why, why are they not calling again? Just when he was standing there and wondering, he heard the explosive sound from the site. He was shocked. For a minute, he did not know what was happening. When the understanding dawned on him, he realized that if, they, if he had been there operating the machine and if it had exploded, it would have exploded on him and he might have even lost his life. And suddenly he remembered, he recalled what Bhagwan said, Devki, we will give him something better. So this is what Bhagwan probably meant. He has given me my life. He has given me, he has saved me from a certain death. So you see, how do we measure grace? How do we define it? So sometimes not giving what we want can also be grace and then we would get something much, much better than that. Bhagwan used to say that the, the wind of grace is ever blowing all sides. There is the flow of grace, the pouring of grace, he would say. It is, it's like rain and it's pouring all the time on all sides. We have to learn to receive it. To know, to receive this grace, we need to have certain preparation of mind. We need some qualification. That is what is called the tapas. So, we have been chanting His very powerful name and making prayer day after day after day. And today also we shall make, knowing that Bhagwan knows better. His grace is always flowing and it is working all the time. We do not know in what ways it is working, though of course we, some of us can understand how it's working. But the appearance and the reports are different, but still we shall continue our prayer knowing that one day it will definitely happen and very soon at that. Bhagwan, beloved Bhagwan, again we shall see one or two incidents which illustrate the infinite glory of Bhagwan, the Divine. Yogi Ram Kumar. Though he called himself a dirty beggar, a dirty sinner, a lazy sinner, a crazy sinner, we have been going through several leelas of Bhagwan, and we see the glimpses of this great yogi. This is a story, there are two stories of Agarbhati, that is the incense sticks. Once, <coughs> of course the incense stick is symbolic of the great souls also, because it burns itself to give such beautiful divine fragrance, conducive to meditation on God. This is exactly what these great souls are doing. Once 
श्री पेरमाल राजवैया ऑफ कृष्णगिरी हैड कम टू भगवान एंड सेड दैट दे वर ऑल गोइंग टू केदार बद्री द हिमालय देन भगवान ब्रॉट आउट वन सिंगल पैकेट ऑफ इंसन स्टिक्स एंड सेड प्लीज टेक इट दे टेक इट एंड गिव इट दे so when they reached badri shrine and they were all seated each one was offering whatever offering they had brought after everybody offered everything that they had brought the pujari said asked has anybody brought a packet of agarbatti and suddenly they remembered she permaad raj ayya and his group remembered what bhagwan had sent and then there was a little agitation they were thinking what he, have we forgotten to bring it or even if you brought it have we kept it in the room and not brought it here my god we have forgotten how bad of us and then she permaal rajoya put his hand into his bag and found this to his great delight and then uh, he gave it to the puja and then it dawned on all those people around there and to us also are going through we who are reliving this experience of others that it is the one that gave the incense sticks and the one who asked for it reminded people for that particular offering of the sincere sticks one and the same the one divinity so that divinity for which sake they had climbed up the mountain gone up till there th- thousands of miles that the same divinity has taken the form of this beggar become very simple it come among the people moved with people talked to with them interacted with them suffered with them and enjoyed good things with them it is he the same vishwatomukha the one with thousands of faces so we shall remember this this is swami is the all pervasive all knowing all powerful divine the other incident is somewhat humorous at the same time it teaches an unforgettable lesson that uh, swami's purvashma that is before bhagwan became one with god before he became the universal being mm-hmm. the divine when he was still living in the world with his relatives those relatives had come to know that bhagwan was living in tiruvannamalai so some of them had come as a family and one of them was swami's brother in law ramachandra rai his wife shrimati manorama devi swami had great love for her and great respect for her for some reason which she must have deserved in some way otherwise this kind of response would not have come from swami we do not know of course and uh, swami when she, just before she left swami gathered all the packets of incense sticks there in the sanadhi street house and packed them up and gave her and she met manorama devi went around telling everybody with pride that swami had sent all this and that it would last for one year for her hearing this mata ji ram ranjani devi when she had come with her daughter to sanadhi street house at the time they were given room in the same sanadhi street house behind and uh, she had this longing for the same thing she thought bhagwan would give her also plenty of incense sticks 
packets. But then nothing was coming. They were staying there for two days, three days, and nothing was coming her way. And finally she thought she should ask for it. She called her daughter Bina and said, Please tell your father to give me incense sticks packets. So Bina promptly went and asked her father or Bhagwan, and immediately Bhagwan flared up. What? Incense sticks? What for? And immediately she felt a warning bell, Bina, but she couldn't help it. She had to be with him. Her mother was very hesitant and she also feared asking, so she sent her daughter. And now the daughter is in a fix. She didn't know what to do. But then Bhagwan started the Leela. He took her to every part of the house and searched for the incense sticks. Not a single packet could be found anywhere. He ransacked right in front of her, the whole place, and finally he said, no incense packets now, what can we do? And then he said, there's, there's a room there, there are two rooms. He, he went into one of the rooms, he said, let me search here, let me see. And then he came out with two incense sticks, not packets, just two individual incense sticks. And then he gave it to her, you give it to your mother. Bina was very upset, disappointed, because her mother was expecting lots of <laughs> incense packets and all that his father could manage was two incense sticks. How would she take it to her? What would she say to her? Anyway, she went and offered it to her mother and her mother was also very upset very disappointed and she was thinking that, why, why is he doing this to me? When he had all those pockets, packets to offer to the other lady, not even two, two sticks he has given me. But then, she being Mataji, instantly it dawned on her that she should not have imitated the other lady. That, that was not to his liking. She could have asked for something that she really wanted, she really needed, and that would have been given to her. That would have been, that would have been given to her with blessings. Anyway, she understood. And this incident is also a lesson for all of us that we should never imitate others. There is no need. Each one's need is different and the Divine meets our needs accordingly. There is no need to yape others. So remembering this, we see here in these two incidents two different glimpses of the Divine life of Bhagwan. With this in mind, we understand that the Divine is like a doctor giving each one a medicine that they need, not what they want. That is why Bhagavan used to ask us to sing that song, I have no complaints, I have no complaints. When the Divine is there to give me what I need, it may not give me what I want, but it will definitely give me what I need. So this assurance is there, so he used to make us sing the song again and again. Once a lady from Paimbatore had come with a papaya, she plucked from her own garden. First time, Bhagwan was very happy with it, he accepted it. And then this lady understood that, okay, Bhagwan likes it very much. So next time, another one was coming, immediately she brought it and submitted. And this time, Bhagwan kept quiet, he didn't say anything, but he still accepted in silence. And the third time, there was a bigger one, and she brought it, he got angry. He said, you take it with you. He treated her in such a way that she understood the message, that he did not want any repetition of this anymore. But we are every day repeating this prayer because we need to and Bhagawan will do the needful. 
So let us submit our prayers at the feet of this embodiment of boundless compassion, which understands our needs and does the needful in time. Bhagwan, 